call the Oil Oak Traffic Committee meeting to order. This is Tuesday, May 26th at 7.03 p.m. Uh, the first thing uh, I want to do is a roll call. Um, and the way I'd like to try this is simply, I'm going to call your name and you're going to unmute yourself. I, or do we have to unmute people? Holly? They should be able to unmute themselves. Okay. Um, and just uh, say I and kind of put your hand in front of the screen so I can kind of um, familiarize myself uh, with this process here. Uh, I'll start with uh, Bell Morales. Are you here? Here. Great, thanks. Tom Allen? Here. Great, thanks, Tom. Uh, Brian Cousel? Hello. And, um, hi, Brian. Um, and you're the um, ROPD representative, I assume? Correct. Great. Thanks, Brian. You got Andrew Kowalkowski. Here. Great, right, thanks, Andrew. Mark Steiner. Here. Uh, Amanda Morris Smith. Present. Hi. Hi, Amanda. Uh, someone's camera's not working. Steve Burnell. Maybe he's having audio problems mm -hmm. as well. Yes, Steve is with engineering, so he's kind of shadowing. Ah, oh, can you hear me now? There you are. Yep. Uh, Rick Karlowski? Here. Hey, Rick. And did I miss anybody? Ali, you don't need I'm here. <laughs> and I see um, Jennifer, I think, is watching us also. I'm here, yeah. I just don't have video. Okay. Thanks, Jen. All right, let me get back to the agenda here. So we can call the roll call complete. Um, and I'm not gonna even read the preamble. Well, I guess I could. Uh, the traffic committee consists of Royal Oak property owners appointed by the city commission. Your volunteers, not paid or elected. What we decide tonight is merely a recommendation to the city commission. If you do not agree with the findings or the decisions is this committee you may go before the city commission and discuss your issue with them at this meeting you'll be given the opportunity to speak however at the city commission meeting please make your comments during public comment on the agenda otherwise you may not be able to voice your concerns uh, and holly i might ask you when these items come up on the next city commission a little later it's important to understand that professionals make preliminary recommendations to the traffic committee. They consist of civil and traffic engineers, outside consultants, and public safety officials. You may have been informed, you may have been informed that these professionals have denied your request or petition. This denial doesn't mean that we're going to vote that way. However, we are committed to discussing the issues at hand in a pragmatic and sensible manner. Our ultimate recommendation will be one that benefits our citizens and community as a whole. That was a mouthful. Um, on to item three on the agenda that I'm looking at, which is the meeting minutes from January 28th, 2020, which was some time ago, um, but they were distributed and looking for a motion to approve the minutes from January 28th. I'll move. Who did that? Tom did that? Tom. Um. Okay, great. We have a second. I'll second. Okay, that was Rick. You guys got to go kind of faster. Kind of wave at the screen when you do stuff. Right, we have a motion and second. Uh, any discussion on the, the meeting minutes? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Great. We've got the meeting minutes passed. Uh, this is where we would have public comment. Um, from what I understand, those uh, the comments were notified and uh, opportunity given, and there were no calls in. Is that strictly what we have to announce right now, or is there any further? 
That's it. Okay. So being no public comment was received. We'll move on to uh, rescheduled items, which are none. And the next thing I'm showing is probably on your tally, it's 5A, but I've got it as 6A, request to install a stop sign on East Bloomfield Avenue at Ardmore. I'll let you take it, Holly. Thanks. Um, and just before we get into the meat of the agenda, the next commission meeting that, that these will be on will be on June 22nd. Thank you. Um, so uh, item 6A was a request uh, received from Gail Burkholder. She resides on East Bloomfield, asking to install a stop sign on East Bloomfield at Ardmore Avenue. There is a crosswalk for Oak Ridge Elementary at this location, and she says that drivers are speeding without awareness of children and the safety guards. Um, so reviewing this, uh, East Bloomfield and Ardmore are both 27 foot wide local roads. Both consist of concrete pavement with integral curb and gutter. Ardmore intersects East Bloomfield as a T intersection with one existing stop sign for northbound Ardmore traffic. There is a painted crosswalk on East Bloomfield Avenue that aligns with the western side of Ardmore. And there are school pedestrian crossing signs located at the crosswalk location and also the appropriate warning signs about 250 to 300 feet um, to the east, to the west, and also the south. Uh, Three-year accident reports show that there are no reported crashes at or near the intersection. Uh, we performed pedestrian counts at, uh, at this intersection in October 28th and 29th. Um, and the numbers are shown here. So on the 28th, we had 18 pedestrians in the morning, 34 pedestrians crossing in the evening, or later afternoon, I should say, when school lets out. Um, and then on October 29th, we had 21 crossing in the morning and 31 crossing in the afternoon. Stop signs are not necessarily required at all crosswalk locations, and the current signage and crosswalk striping do conform with the recommendations from the Michigan Manual of Uniform Traffic Control Devices. Um, we requested traffic measurements from the TIA and determined that the 85th percentile speed at that intersection is 27 miles per hour, and there were 390 vehicles per day on East Bloomfield. Uh, so the 85th percentile speed is within the acceptable range for a 25 mile per hour street and the volume of traffic is at the low end for a residential street uh, being in the zero to 600 cars per day range. A uh, city typically installs additional regulatory signs at school crosswalks. Based on the pedestrian data, this crosswalk is being used by the students and installing a stop sign at this location would be consistent with past city practice and would be appropriate in accordance with the Michigan manual. Um, we do concur with Michigan Manual that the purpose of regulatory signs is to promote safe traffic and pedestrian movements and actions. Uh, we also concur with the national studies that indicate inappropriately placed stop signs do not necessarily lessen speeding and can even result in higher speeds. Um, we have found though that there is one warrant for installing a stop sign at this location and that is because it's located near a school. And for that reason, we are recommending to install two stop signs on East Bloomfield Avenue at Ardmore. Uh, estimated cost of $360. Great, thank you, Holly. Um, a question for me, I guess when you say install two stop, sign, two stop signs, um, where are those exactly gonna be located? Um, do they face in opposite directions from one another? Yeah, yeah so they'll be for eastbound Bloomfield and then westbound Bloomfield at Ardmore. Okay. So three-way stop. Okay. You said a three-way stop or? Right, because right now there's one stop sign for Ardmore when it tees into Bloomfield. Okay. Um, and then traffic just can flow through the intersection on Bloomfield unrestricted. So now I understand this, this adds two, two, two signs to an existing sign. So the, the T intersects yes. now has stop signs in every direction. Right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, that's my question. Does anybody else have any questions or a motion? Uh, this is Amanda, and I'll, I'll move to adopt the staff recommendation. We have a motion to adopt the staff. Is there support? Second. Support. We have support by the one. Is there any further discussion or questions? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Hearing none, the motion passes. That went real smooth. Um, we're on to item 5B, request to install no through traffic signs on South Wilson Avenue at 10 Mile Road. Uh, yes, this one, we received a request from two different people who reside on South William, uh, from Patricia Reynas and David Leon, um, to install no through traffic signs on South Wilson Avenue at 10 Mile Road. Um, Patricia stated that traffic on her street has become extremely heavy since the road diet on Campbell Road was installed. Um, and during rush hour, cars are speeding down their street to avoid Campbell Road. And she's concerned for the safety of her child and her pet. Um, and then uh, Mr. Leone also provided similar concerns in his request that traffic has increased, especially during the evening rush hour due to the road diet on Campbell and also the I-75 construction. He's requesting the no through traffic signs um, at this location and at all the north-south streets at 10 mile between Campbell Road and the west I-696 ramp. Um, so reviewing this, South Wilson is a 27 foot wide concrete local road with in a row curb and gutter, excuse me, curb and gutter. 10 mile road is a major road that's under the jurisdiction of Oakland County. And the road consists of composite pavement with concrete curb and gutter. And it is a one way westbound road with two lanes of travel. The three year accident report from 2016 to 2018 showed no recorded crashes on South Wilson Avenue from 10 mile up to Lincoln. And we did get uh, traffic measurements uh, at two locations on uh, Wilson. Uh, first was between 10 Mile and Hudson. And there the 85th percentile speed was 86, I'm sorry, 26 miles per hour. And there were 350 vehicles per day measured. And then between Hudson and Lincoln, the same 85th percentile speed of 26 miles per hour um, and a lower vehicles per day of 179. And so the 85th percentile speed is within the acceptable range for a 25 mile per hour street. And the volume of traffic is at the low end for a residential street. Again, that's about uh, zero to 600 vehicles per day. Um, we did note that there is a higher intensity of traffic volume during the morning and afternoon peak hours, um, but not unreasonable for a local street. Uh, we had 23 per hour maximum in the morning and 62 vehicles per hour maximum in the afternoon peak hour. Um, and I provided a table here just to, as a reminder of, you know, what's what's reasonable for a local street in terms of volume uh, per day and also volumes per hour if you wanted to break it down that way. Um, and really just the commentary here is that the role of our road network is to allow the movement of goods, services, and people, a network made up of road corridors that perform different functions known as the road hierarchy with local streets, collector streets, and arterials and major roads. Um, the function of each road corridor within this hierarchy is determined by the type of service that it provides. Most of Royal Oaks road network follows a grid system, which provides numerous paths for reaching destinations reasonably and efficiently, and no street in our city is intended solely for the use of the properties that abut it. Um, no traffic signs, as we've talked in the past, do require a considerable amount of police effort in order to enforce and are uh, generally not considered an effective deterrent to significant cut through traffic. Um, based on the measurements we've taken, there really does not appear to be a volume or a speeding issue on this street. And so we do not recommend any changes for South Wilson. So your suggested recommendation? Oh, sorry, suggested, so to deny the request then to install no through traffic signs. Great, thank you. Uh, I'm trying to share my screen. Does everybody see my screen okay? Yep. Okay, cool. Um, looking for comments, questions, or a motion on item, I guess we're calling this 6B. Uh, I move we accept the uh, staff's recommendations, Tom Allen. We have a motion by Tom. Is there support? I'll support Rick Kurlowski. We have a motion by town in support by Rick. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Move on to 5C, request to install stop signs on Woodcrest Drive at Austin Avenue and on Maxwell Avenue at Austin Avenue. 
Yes. Um, so we received a request from Laura Frega, who resides in the southeast corner of Woodcrest Drive and Austin Avenue to install stop signs on Woodcrest Drive at Austin and also on Maxwell at Austin. Uh, she states that motorists are speeding on both streets, especially now that the roads have been repaved, and she's concerned for the safety of residents in the area. She noted that the other north-south streets in her neighborhood west of Woodcrest, including Hilldale, Lockwood, and Fernwood, all have stop signs in place at Austin Avenue. Uh, there are many small children on her street, and since there is no stop sign from Farnham to Catalpa, drivers can really pick up speed. She states that Maxwell is used as a cut through between 11 Mile and Catalpa. Um, there is no parking along Maxwell by Marninger Park, and many people park their vehicles on Austin and Crane and then walk over Maxwell to get to the park. Um, a crosswalk and a stop sign at this intersection would increase the safety of residents and visitors to the park. Um, so we're taking a look at this. Oh, and I should note, uh, Laura did was planning to join us tonight um, to speak in favor of this. And she emailed me about 20 minutes before the meeting saying she was unable to attend, um, but seemed to be happy with the staff recommendation for whatever that's worth. Um, so Austin Avenue is a 27 foot wide local road with concrete pavement and inner row curb and gutter. Uh, Woodcrest is a 27 foot wide local road with composite pavement and concrete curb and gutter. And then Maxwell is a 37 foot wide major road considered one of our collector streets. And that has asphalt pavement south of Austin Avenue and concrete pavement with integral curb north of Austin. Uh, Meininger Park is located along the east side of Maxwell and it does have pedestrian ramps directing pedestrians across Maxwell at both Austin Avenue and at Crane Avenue. There are no sign, I'm sorry, there's no crosswalk signs or pavement markings at either of those crossings. The three-year accident report 2016 to 2018 showed no recorded crashes at or near the intersections of Woodcrest, uh, Woodcrest and Austin and at Maxwell and Austin. Um, so on the following page, I have a kind of a map that, that lays out where all the different stop signs are in that neighborhood. Um, and as, as the requester noted, both Maxwell and Woodcrest have no stop signs from Catalpa um, all the way down the street to either Farnham or Park where they end. Uh, respectively. And so that's about a distance of 0.3 miles uh, with no stop signs. Um, so this neighborhood is a little bit unusual compared to most of the neighborhoods that we come across here. The stop signs um, here don't really follow the every other block pattern that we see in most of our city, um, at least in the neighborhoods. Um, but they are where they are <laughs> for now. Uh, the city requested traffic measurements from the TIA for speed and traffic volume, which were measured in January. Uh, found that on Maxwell Road from Sherman to Catalpa, the 85th percentile speed was 27 miles per hour with just under 2,000 vehicles per day. And on Woodcrest from Farnham to Catalpa, the 85th percentile speed was 25 miles per hour with 235 vehicles per day. So the 85th percentile speed for both roads is within the acceptable range for a 25 mile per hour street. On Woodcrest, the volume of traffic is at the low end for a residential street. And on Maxwell, the volume of traffic is within the low range for a collector street. And for collectors, we were looking at about 1,800 to 2,870 vehicles per day as the range for low volume. At the November 2019 traffic committee meeting, the city commission um, approved uh, approve the installation of crosswalk pavement markings on Maxwell Avenue at Farnham and at Maxwell and Sherman. So this is just south of Meininger Park. We had already discussed that as a, uh, at the previous meeting that we held. Um, the data does not indicate a volume or speeding issue on either Maxwell or on Woodcrest and therefore no changes are recommended. Um, it is consistent, however, to have crosswalks and pedestrian crossing signage uh, where pedestrians access our city parks. And so crosswalk striping and signage are recommended at the two intersections at Crane and at Austin, um, where they cross over Maxwell. And so our recommendation is to deny the request to install stop signs on Woodcrest and at Austin and on Maxwell at Austin, and also to install six inch white crosswalk striping across Maxwell Road at Austin and at Crane and four of the appropriate pedestrian crossing signs. Great, thank you, Holly. I was just looking at the map and um, 
to identify, uh, I guess the map doesn't go all the way, well, there it is on Austin. Um, so we're gonna have crosswalks at uh, Maxwell and Austin. And then did you say Woodcrest and Austin also? No, Crane, which is up to the north one more. Okay. Yeah. Right there. There's already ramps there. So people cross there already. There's just no warning for cars that people might be doing that. So that's for pedestrians crossing Maxwell to get to Mininger Park? Yes. Uh, and you said one at Austin as well. Is there any other ones that I'm missing? Um, well, the one there will be one. I don't think it's there yet um, for Farnham. And that was approved at our January meeting. And Farnham already has a four-way stop. Yes. I'm just talking about uh, the crosswalk striping and the appropriate signs that should go along with that. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or a motion from the committee? I'll move to accept staff recommendation. We have a motion by Mr. Karlowski. Is there support? This is Mark Steiner. I'll second. We have a second by Mark. Any further comments or discussion on this item? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion carries. Uh, we got through these three items pretty well. I think that's a record. Yeah, and everything was um, voted unanimously from what I could tell. Um, is there anything else that you had, Holly? Um, stuff we can look out for in another couple months or? Nothing right now. And, and we'll see what happens in a couple months if we're doing it like this or if we're in person, I'm really not sure. And yeah, hopefully um, in a couple of months, we're back to where we can be in room 315 there. Yeah. Um, uh, one thing I will know, I guess, uh, briefly is uh, a lot of, we don't have a lot of traffic requests in right now. I think we have two or three, but as stuff starts coming in, um, the TIA has recommended that we not really take any measurements until we're kind of back to a normal traffic flow on our streets. So to be honest, I'm not sure I'll have a whole lot for July, but we'll see where we are when we get there. Okay. Uh, if, if anyone on the committee has um, <clears throat> items they do wish to discuss, I really don't want to um, put uh, uh, something out there right now, but please email um, Holly or Jennifer um, if you do want to bring something to some, uh, a traffic item to this committee's attention. But uh, other than that, I'd like to um, entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn by the line. Is there any support? Support, Tom. Tom supports. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. We are adjourned. Nice job, everybody. Thanks. Everyone stay safe and healthy. Bye. You as well. Stay safe. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, all. Okay. We're closed. <laughs>